Hi, I'm Lydia. I'm Kieran. I'm Sim. And I'm Connor. With Ease of Liberty, and you are watching the Chana 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 podcast. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of my podcast. Uh, we have very special guests today joining all the way from UK. We have members of Thieves of Liberty. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hello. How's everyone doing? How's everyone doing this morning? <laughs> um, we literally were never up this early ever. So we're all just a little bit. <laughs> I think we're all still asleep, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how's the situation in United Kingdom with, uh, you know, with the pandemic and COVID and everything? Um, we're still on, like, pretty much full lockdown. You're allowed to go outside and visit people, but, like, there's no pubs open, there's no shops open, so we're all just housebound at the moment. So really bored. <laughs> That's the situation right now. Right, right. Uh, so where, where, from? Uh, can you tell me about where you're from? Uh, which city or town? Yeah, so Jim? we're from uh, we're from Sunderland in the UK, which is in the northeast. Um, we're all from pretty close to there, so that's what we class as our hometown. Um, that's where we practice. Uh, it's a nice city up in the in the northeast. We, we always get told by people um, when when we when people have actually heard of Sunderland before, they always say, "Oh yeah." People are really friendly from there, um, which oh, is a good thing, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> News right. to me. Right. <laughs> so would you mind in introducing yourself and tell, tell me what do you do in the band? Um, I'm Lydia. I'm the singer slash uh, rhythm guitarist of the band. Aaron, I'm the lead guitarist. I'm Tim. I play bass. And I'm Connor, I'm the drummer and resident noisemaker in every aspect. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, your childhood and like what's your like earliest uh, memory of music? Um, personally, the first song that I ever remember hearing, and this isn't cool at all, but it was uh, Sure, Believe, Do You Believe in Life After Love? That's the first song I ever remember hearing. And I don't particularly like that song and it didn't actually make an impact. But for some reason, that's the one that always springs to mind when I get asked that question. Uh, for me, I got uh, an acoustic guitar when I was, it was my seventh birthday, I think. And I didn't know how to play it. And I think for about six years, I would just hit all of the strings at once and just sing random noises over the top of it, saying they were songs. Uh, until one day, um, my mum was like, maybe you should start getting lessons, Karen. <laughs> so, um, and the rest is history. Right. Yeah, for, for me, um, I used to listen to um, classic rock with my dad. Like, we, we would buy him, like, dad rocks CDs uh, when, when it was his birthday or Father's Day. Um, so we'd sit and listen to bands like Free, um, he used to really like uh, like all right now was one of his favorite songs um so I, I used to just sit and listen to rock and i think that's pretty much how i got into that so yeah everybody else's is so much cooler than mine i think uh, i've always just from a young age hit things and for some reason me me parents decided a drum kit would be a good idea and i think very quickly after that they uh, decided against it but yeah, you know, the, the taken over at that point. Yeah, it was it was far too late. But I think my earliest memory really was um, just just taking lessons with a, a local teacher, Robbie, um, practicing tirelessly to do a talent show at school and played along to Ronan Keaton uh, when you say nothing at all. So you know, really rotten from a young age. <laughs> I mean, mine was shy, so. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about what sort of music did you listen to like when you were younger? Like what, what were you like, uh, what comes to mind? I remember my mom was a really big fan of like Deep Purple and The Cult. So she used to like try and get us to listen to this. But at the time, like being a 
like a teenager and that and like going to school and all my friends were listening to like Rihanna and Lady Gaga and I was like mom I don't want to listen to that kind of music like people think I'm weird but then like you know as time went on I realized okay yeah I really don't like any of the stuff that my friends are listening to so I was like right okay show us this music then and then like immediately after she played it I was like I'm in love tell me more so then like she took us down the rabbit hole of like all the classic rock bands and like and I ended up you know finding like my own taste really instead of just going off what all my friends are listening to which I'm thankful for because I don't think I would end up being in a band if I hadn't just given in one day I was like right ma'am play Deep Purple go for it right uh, for, for me I, when I was young I would just listen to boy bands like Buster, McFly, Blue I listened to a lot of Blue <laughs> <laughs> love it um, but yeah I think once once I'd started getting guitar lessons and my tutor would show me a few cool rock songs to play on the guitar, that was when it really changed. And I was learning the likes of Aerosmith, Led Zeppelin, Guns N' Roses. And that was sort of when I found exactly what I wanted to be. Right. For me, it was... Um, I, I, I grew up with three sisters. Um, one of them is um, a little older than me and two younger. So... Uh, I was influenced by my older sister a bit and she was into Green Day when we were younger. So I listened to them quite a bit. Um, and then um, then I discovered um, Rancid. Now I used to listen to them loads. It's, it's how I got into playing the bass because uh, I really liked the bass player from Rancid, Matt Freeman. Um, and then after that, I sort of moved into more, um, more of the um, sort of classic and modern rock. Uh, started to listen to a lot more Slash. Uh, really enjoyed his stuff. Got into a band called Alter Bridge. Absolutely love them. I see Slash poster actually in the background there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, a Slash. <laughs> a Slash. <laughs> um, I think for me, I wasn't really exposed to rock and roll until I got the sort of 13, 14. My earliest stages was Steps and, as Kieran said, like Busted, Blue and all that sort of stuff. Um. I had to go and find rock myself when I, you know, sort of started to meet people my own age when you moved on to the next stage of education. And uh, thankfully, one of my friends, Dan, pulled us towards uh, Slipknot. And I really moved from this pop era of the noughties to this noisy, heavy, scary band. Um, so it was quite the leap. Uh, but it was a good experience to go from one extreme to the other because it gave us that platform to move with everything in between and that sort of bridge me gap for the love of, you know, that classic pop stuff and metal uh, and everything in the middle. So you know, I'm, I'm thankful I had that exposure to, to different music from a younger age. <clears throat> right. So uh, I grew up, actually, I grew up in Sri Lanka. So uh, <coughs> back in the day, I was, I was quite into the Brit, all the Brit pop uh, bands, uh, you know, Oasis and Pulp and uh, Blur and then then it came like Spice Girls and then Boyzone and all the boy bands. <laughs> I, I yeah, still something, have... went, something went a bit wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I have still pictures of my old room back in the day. It's like all these pictures with like you know Spice Girls. I had all the Ronan Keaton and everybody on the wall. <laughs> To be fair, to this day, I think like if Avril Lavigne came on or like some kind of like 2012 Rihanna song, like I would secretly sit there and be like, "Yeah, this is my jam." Yeah, that radio's getting <laughs> that radio's anyone. getting turned up a bit. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so, so uh, what you do in the band, and you know, like you're you're a vocalist, you're a, a drummer. So, who do you think your like sort of influences are, or, or who are your like favorite uh, artists on on what you do? I think we all um, we all have very similar and different influences, you know, because we've all been exposed to different genres of music. Um, you know, the, the likes of Alter Bridge and Slash and um, Hailstorm, Guns and Roses, Royal Republic's a really big one for us. Um, the list really is endless of, you know, those that common ground that we all listen to and, and draw inspiration from. Um, but then. It, at the same time, we do also have our differences. Like Lydia says, she's listened to Rihanna and Avril Lavigne growing up, same Green Day, and myself and Kieran Busted. Um, and all those different areas sort of craft our, you know, our inspiration for writing. So I think 
certainly rhythmically Royal Republic is one for us um, and melodically from, from Lydia's style, I would certainly say Miles Kennedy, uh, Lizzie Hale and, and definitely Dorothy. We've had a lot of comparisons to um, the latter two and it's a big compliment for us and I know Lydia won't admit it on here but I think she's very pleased when she gets those comparisons because she's a big fan of both those and you know being a female front of band um, I think it's certainly nice to be compared to other female fronted artists of that stature as well rather than just oh you know you, you hit the high notes you, you're like Axel Rose you're like Miles Kennedy so you know it, it's certainly nice to be compared to those as well. It is nice also because like those are probably more accurate rather than people who are like you say I'm like Christina Aguilera and I'm like how in what universe <laughs> I've never heard Christina Aguilera sing a rock song but okay whatever thank you <laughs> she's a good singer though so still a yeah, compliment, sure, I'll take it I'll take it right so so Kiran and uh, Sim what about the guitarist who, who who is your like influences with regards to this of course Slash probably but yeah, who else definitely Slash <laughs> uh, Mark Tremonti from Walter Bridge, um, Joe Perry from Aerosmith, Nuno Bettencourt of Extreme, uh, mm. Randy Rhodes was a really big one. Um, he, he's a guitarist too. I think if he hadn't tragically died so young, I think he would be the greatest of all time. Right. Without a doubt. Um, yeah, I, I could list guitarists for, forever. <laughs> But that, that's, that's it. They're, they're the top ones for me personally. How about you, Sim? Yeah. yeah, so for me, uh, like I said uh, earlier, with Matt Freeman from Rancid, he he was the reason that I started playing bass. Um, just what he was doing, he was almost the lead instrument in, in Rancid. Um, and so that's that's what got us hooked on playing bass. And then so I went and listened to a lot more. And, and you know, you come across some really good bass line players like uh, John Entwistle and John Paul Jones. Um, the stuff they were doing at the time was just incredible. Um I think looking at somebody like John Paul Jones, you know, he's in in a band like Led Zeppelin. It's really hard to stand out, but some of the bass lines he played, you get you get people here he's still talking about now. Um, and like all four of the members of that band were just so good at what they did. Um, I think if any of them had been a really good player but not a great one, they just would have completely faded away. But it's looking that they were all so so good. Um, And then um, for more modern sort of stuff, um, I sort of, I enjoy any bass playing where there's just something a bit different in there and, you know, it's not just following the chords all the time. So um, in a lot of slashes stuff, you'll hear some nice bass runs going on in the background and stuff. So, um, yeah, that's, um, I think that's uh, in... In like we met, Connor mentioned, Royal Republic, um, their bass player in in my favorite song by them, Getting Along. He starts that song quite. Like, there's not, not a lot going on in the bass, and then just it gets more and more going all the way through. Um, really, really like that. So he's right. one up there as well. <clears throat> right. So um, uh, before you guys like form uh, Thieves of Liberty, so can you tell me a little bit about your individual journeys? How did you like? What was your like earlier? Were, were you a part of other bands or what did you perform before uh, becoming the TOL? Oh, I was in so many bands growing up. <laughs> I, I couldn't even tell you how many. I, I've lost count. Right. <laughs> um, uh, I, I was in a few with Sim uh, individually and a few with Connor individually. Um, You know, and I think me and Connor did three gigs together under a band named Speedy Violet. Um, but we just never quite found what we were looking for. I think finding like, a really good singer was always the problem. Uh, so we had lots of good musicians around, but we never had the singer who just was like the final piece of the puzzle until one day I was sat in the university um, and saw Lydia perform from her class. And I just straight away, I was like, we guys, we found our singer. I'm getting the band back no. together. Then <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you asked and us that, to join the band and I was like, no, nah, I'm not interested, sorry. <laughs> yeah. And only a few months later when she changed her mind, fortunately, and now here we are. 
Well, I'd like I'd never been in a band, so I was like, I don't know if I want to be in a band. Like, I'm happy just like singing on my own kind of thing. But then, like, the more I thought about it, I was like, I'm gonna get a lot more. It's like people are gonna pay more attention if I'm louder, <laughs> pretty much. So me standing there like singing a little tune with my acoustic guitar, like you know, there'd be people like, oh, that's so nice. But like now when I'm singing in the band, like people are literally like, oh, like that's good, and I'm like. Yeah. So. Right. I made the right choice, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So, uh, how did you settle on this? Uh, I was curious about the name. Uh, you know, Thieves of Liberty. What do you? What's the message on that? Uh, about that name? Do we even know? <laughs> I think we're, like we were spitballing ideas for names. And we were literally just like throwing random words out there. And it was just like, um, Liberty Thieves or like Liberty Creek or like Water Liberty. Like we were literally just like seeing random words at each other. And then it was like, how about these are Liberty? And like, that was like the the name that we had for a while. And then I think Kieran like got to meet Mark Tremonti and he like, he told him about the band Thieves of Liberty. And he was like, oh yeah, that's a cool name. So then it, like, he was like, Tremonti said it's a cool name. It's a cool name. We're keeping it. So, right, right. Uh, because when I heard the name, because it, it's it's kind of what's happening right now, right? Everybody's liberties yeah. are like. <laughs> yeah. Life, life it's not our fault. Don't blame us. So... <laughs> uh, so I was looking at you. I was listening to your uh, music in Spotify and also in uh, YouTube. Uh, I wanted to ask you about this song, uh, Wearing You Out. So this is like your like earlier song, right? Yeah. yeah, that was our very first single. Uh, single. Uh, oh my God, uh, three years ago that came yeah. out now. Around about to this oh. time as well. It was in the Actually, April. No, I don't, yeah, April, I three don't years ago. 2020 wow. is a year, so can we just like... Oh, <laughs> it was still just two years ago. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah it was... We've been together for quite a while before that single, and we were doing lots of covers, shows, um, just to try and make some money so we'd actually get in the studio and record. Um, and that was a song we'd been sitting on for a while, because one day I was, think I was just sitting at home with an acoustic guitar and that riff came into my head. So I just recorded it on my phone and sent it to the guys. They all hated it. Um, and then <laughs> and then we couldn't think of anything else, so we used it. <laughs> Wow, but, uh, way to sell it. <laughs> I know. Um, but once we added everything else in, though, like it really came together. Um, you know, it's it's high energy. It's really in your face. It's loud, but it you know it's it, it's good and it did really well. Um, we got loads of support on the back of it, despite it only being our first song. Right. So what's what's the process for the song? So uh, like how the lyrics who writes the lyrics who what's the process what's the step like do you follow certain process no Every... it's usually like we all just oh, go on Connor. <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say i think every song sort of differs depending on what we bring to the table at that time you know where the song currently is like Kieran says a lot of the ideas will come via a little you know, either unplugged electric guitar, sometimes it's plugged in. Um, fortunately, as we've gotten a little bit older and we've been able to buy, you know, software that'll let us send high quality tracks, it'll come through in bits and pieces. But a lot of the time it's just, yeah, that's good. Or mm, we're not quite sure about that, but until we all get into the room together and play it and feel, you know, what the song could potentially be, um, you know, a lot of the times we do dismiss things early on, but you know, certainly in the past, a lot of the songs have come with a riff um, into the rehearsal room and they've pretty much come together quite quickly. There's there's certainly been parts where we've tried to be a little bit more experimental. Um, certainly Roll With The Punch has been the, the latest demo that we released. Um, uh, that's got a, a pre-chorus, which is a little bit more technical um, rhythmically. I know myself and Sim have a lot of, you know, um, dynamic changes here and there which we had to you sort of pulled apart and then put it back together um but as far as the structure of songs it, it usually comes together quite organically in the rehearsal room i think if we try and write from home which you know unfortunately we've had to do for the last year because of covid <coughs> excuse me um you know 
we're looking forward to being back in the rehearsal room and making noise together because we're best at that. I think everyone will agree that our sound is better live um, than it is captured on tape, which, you know, is really why we've always had this upbeat, energetic style because that's what we're good at. We're good at playing live. Um, but yeah, the, the writing process, as I say, it does change from song to song. Um, but it's very organic once it's in the room together with, with all four of us. We always write our best stuff when we're not trying. <laughs> Yeah. Like, if, we, like, if we go into if a we rehearsal have... with loads of ideas, we, we'll we'll just hit a wall. But if we're not trying, if we're doing something completely different, someone will accidentally play something really cool, and then we'll be like, "Quick, use it before we forget That's it." That's literally what happened with Medicine <laughs> Wizard. I was trying to get like a decent sound on my amp, so I was just playing like those chords, and then like putting a little uh, bass note in, and then like Connor was like, "Do that again." Now try it with this, and then you know before we knew it, we were like halfway writing a song, <laughs> just because I was trying right. to get my arm to work properly. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to ask you about medicine visits, the, the the about especially about the video. What was that the idea about the video? <laughs> um, so the medicine wizard is meant to be like a bartender. So the medicine is alcohol. So we um we went to a bar. We drank alcohol and magic took over because you know when you you've had a few of those you you feel like you're on top of the world so that was it basically we were just a bunch of drunk wizards wandering around Sunderland <laughs> <laughs> those dogs where the dogs come from who knows right uh, so so you you released one EP uh, yeah you EP right so it's a four track EP uh, tell, can you tell me about the EP. Yeah, so we um, we got the songs together. Um, we decided that you know, it, rather than just releasing singles, um, it would be really good to have an EP out before we went on the uh, Fireball tour um, that we were part of. Um, and so we went. And we um, I think we did. Did we write all of those relatively close together? Um, the four songs that we had. Um, Half my readers in yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. Actually, yeah. So "Our Feet the Same" was like an older song that we um, we brought through, and then the other three um, we wrote those in a relatively short space of time. Um, and so we we just um, got ourselves in the studio. Um, we went to Blast Studios, which is uh, local to us. Um, worked with a guy called Alex MacArthur, um, and it was it was such a good experience to do that because. Um, the equipment that they've got there and the size of the studio and the way the room's all laid out and stuff, you know, you, you're sort of behind the glass watching somebody record vocals and things. And it's, it's just a really cool experience. Um, so yeah, we um, we got in and did that. And I think, um, did we do that? It's four days, was it? So it was sort of like roughly a, a day for each song. However long we had, I know we ran out of time. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Alex was nice uh, enough to let us like stay for like a couple extra hours just to get pretty much everything done. But I think that's because um, as we were recording, are you ready? We realized like it like as it was, it was a very empty song. So like we start like you started like suggesting like oh like maybe put some vocals in here and maybe like add a little thing in there. And then before you know it, like this song that was just meant to be you know a, a, like an EP track, good, but like it just turned into something. Like completely different to what it was when we first went in the studio, and it's like now like one of my favorite songs on there. So, thank thank you, well, Alex, for that. <laughs> right. Yeah, we, we didn't even have vocals in the chorus for "Are You Ready?" Originally, it was just the guitar hook was just the chorus. Uh, but yeah, I think the the vocals really elevated it onto a different level. Right. Me and Tim just went out into like where the pool table was, didn't we? It just started, let's just yeah. find some notes that will work in that, and yeah, yeah, find some uh, back and harmonies. Like, yeah, that was yeah, yeah. Um, I I really love the song uh, "Mr. Illusion" <laughs> from that EP. Yeah, uh, thank you. <laughs> we uh, um, did we release that one as a single? I think we did. Yeah, that was the lead yeah. single. Yeah. yeah. So, um. Uh, I, I sort of felt that I, I think I read somewhere that this is, you know, sort of like, you know, selling your soul, you know, so, sort of a song. Uh, uh, yeah. Tell um, me so about that. Basically, basically um, I had this really weird dream where um, 
there was a shop and it was like this shop was where a nightclub is in Sunderland and you'd go in and like they'd be like he would sell skills so like say that you wanted to be a really good guitar he would sell you that skill but you would give him your soul kind of thing and uh this is a very elaborate dream when I think about it and uh I like I tried to write it down because I woke up in the middle of the night and I was like that was really cool I'm writing that down and then as I was writing it down like I kind of just I was like this would really work as lyrics and here we are <laughs> right right because it reminds me that you know that Robert Johnson story and then the movie Crossroads <laughs> uh, yeah I actually don't uh, it reminds me of an episode of Rick and Morty which is really really lame but <laughs> <laughs> right um uh, also you uh you released I also love the song A Wall. So you have a remastered version as well now, right? That is out. So uh, can you tell me about A Wall? Yeah, I think A Wall is probably our um, heaviest song. Uh, I, I personally think it's the best recorded one because of how heavy it is. I think a lot of the more upbeat rock is a little bit lighter in the rhythmic sections, which makes it a bit harder to capture our sound when you're trying to like, you're scrutinizing every single note when you're in the recording room. Um, and the AWOL was just sort of go in there, smack the hell out of the drums, um, you know, play as loud as you possibly can and boom, you've got AWOL. Um, I think Kieran would uh, disagree with you there on the solo. Yeah, the, the solo was quite fun. There was times when we were, we were almost like, oh, so what's the term when you everybody was in weird positions just trying to like hold the guitar in positions for Kira and I think at the end he just went just let us do it and then just sort of played it out of frustration of not getting it for like half an hour and we were like that's the one just save it and just keep it away over there we, we never have to look at it again until it needs to be you just need, I think there. you just need to like prod Kieran with a stick or something and just like you know annoy him just enough that he plays guitar better so like literally just like jab him in the back of the head with something it's like play the solo play the solo play the solo yeah, yeah. I, I have a You've really got it down bad now, habit. Though. I have a really bad habit of just writing songs that I can't even play. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so nice. yeah. Uh, so this, uh, you know, this uh, pandemic and being quarantined and all this uh, lockdown. So, how did you guys, uh, you know, keep the music going with this? What did what you guys been up to? And uh, I I saw your quarantine sort of a video. You guys did this. Uh, cover of extreme cover also right video with uh, sort of uh, quarantine type video so can you tell me about how it's been uh, during this lockdown yeah we, um, well as well as uh, like Colin was saying earlier we've been trying to do is lots of writing we thought it would be really fun to you know get loads of our friends from other bands you know loads of other great musicians involved and all come together and try and release uh, just a really good song uh, so we decided to do a cover of Get the Funk Out by Extreme, which um, we probably underestimated the difficulty of that song a little bit when we chose it. Um, again, that solo ruined my life. <laughs> but, uh, I got there in the end. Um, yeah, it was it, it, it was a really big project in the end. I think we had 15 musicians involved. Um, you know, it's a lot of people organise and make sure everyone's doing the, the right bits we need to bring everything together. Um, and then we had to put the video together. Again, we uh, we sent to Alex MacArthur, who did the EP from Blast, and he mixed and mastered it for us. And I'm uh, uh, really happy with how it turned out in the end. Uh, it took a long time, but I think it was worth it. Right. Yeah, it, 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 it was very nice, actually. I really loved it. Uh, because yeah. Extreme is also one of my favourite bands, so... <laughs> nice. uh, they're, they're so good we love them yeah it's I, I think, <laughs> yeah um i went to that phonography uh tour i saw them like twice uh i think twice oh, or wow. three times already uh and then one time i was coming uh, after the show next day i was in the airport and then i met nuno in the airport oh, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow the, the very first yeah. gig i went to i went to see alder bridge uh, in Newcastle, and Sim was there as well, actually, I think. Um, yeah, and yeah. Way Mark Tremonti and Miles Kenny, yeah, before we even knew each other, Mark Tremonti and Miles Kenny were having a guitar battle, and Nuno Betancourt walked out on stage and joined them in the guitar battle. Uh, it, was just, <laughs> it was one of the craziest things I've ever seen. It was the first ever gig I went to. I couldn't believe it. Wow. He, was, um, he was on tour with Rihanna at the time, wasn't he? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He played for Rihanna, I think. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's why he was Rihanna. Didn't even know that yeah. was a thing. I can't even think of a guitar <laughs> part in a Rihanna song. <laughs> yeah. California King Bed. Oh, right. Right. It's got um, a slash esque solo. Yeah. So how how is your uh, uh, before uh, of course before this all this uh, you know chaos came in uh, how was the live performances so you I know you guys p- 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 uh, open for several uh, artists and uh, tell me about that yeah so um, we we applied for um, a position um, on the Fireball tour um, just you know it was we got an email through from from one of the like newsletters we signed up to it says you know applications are now open for this and it, they were looking for bands to open the local tour and it was with um, Flogging Molly the Bronx and Face to Face and at the time we only had Wearing You Out out available and it was you know like put in an application send us your music so we sent that across um, and it, they were looking you know that this the style for Fireball is more sort of punk and pop punk so we just we applied and thought, well, you know, what's the worst could happen? They'll just say no if they don't want us. And then we got an email back saying that they'd like us to, to be there for the Battle of the Bands. Um, and we went and did that. Um, and we, we we got to win that. So we, we got to open the show. And then from there, Fireball themselves gave us quite a few shows. So we, we opened that for Flogger Molly Bronx face to face. And then we got to play. Um, we opened the show for uh, the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. They were playing with uh, Sonic Boom Six and the Barstool Preachers. Um, so that was really good. We we got to go down to London and go and do that. Um, and then there was the the main Fireball tour that we we won the like out of all of the local dates they chose us as the as the best band. So we became Fireball's hottest band, uh, which we technically still are because of COVID. They haven't <laughs> announced who the, the latest one is yet. So we've been Fireball's hottest band for for quite some time now, which is so nice. Does that mean that we get to the tour again? <laughs> I hope so. Hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed. Yeah, so, so, so that was with um, that was with Less Than Jake, Goldfinger, and Sir Ferris. Um, and you know that was just such a good time. Um, it was so we'd never been on tour before. We've played plenty of local shows, and we've had the odd show. So we played Camden Rocks festivals a couple of times. Um, so that's us traveling down to London, having a great sunny day in London because the weather's always been perfect when we've gone. Um, and you know playing down there and then and then watching some bands as well but then to actually go on tour and our first ever tour to be a real proper professionally set up big venues um, big bands it was really good experience and I think um, it's just made us want it more like we all already wanted to to make it but then after seeing what life was like on tour when you're sort of one of those bigger bands it's like this needs to be what we do you know Um we just had such a good time. Um, and I think we, we held our own as well. You know, I, I was worried that, you know, we might get quite nervous and there'd be a few errors, but I, I feel like we played really well every night and put on a real show. Um, I mean, there were a and few we got errors, a lot of new but... fans. <laughs> well, not but as noticeable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe, Maybe just like ge- me. geographically. <laughs> just geographically, yeah. When I came out on stage and was like, "Good evening, Sheffield," and we were not in Sheffield, we were in Leeds. We'd already been, we'd already been. <laughs> yeah, we'd already been. Before. We'd literally already been to Sheffield. Yeah. But like, because I'd said that, I'd said it the night before. Good evening, in Sheffield. Like, I just came out and said it again, and like immediately afterwards, I was like, "Oh no." <laughs> yeah, I think as soon as Lydia, I think as soon as Lydia said that, we all just became this big. Yeah, say, but like the thing funny. is, though, the way that the, the way our performance works is we do the introduction and then we do two songs off the bat. So there was a solid like ten minutes before I could eventually like go up and say, "I'm sorry, Lee." <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> it. So it was all this music. Songs, was just like, uh... <laughs> all this, all this music, and then the big ending, and I and just hear Lydia out, of, just cymbals washing and chords playing. I just hear Lydia go, "Leads." <laughs> <laughs> they, were quite, they were quite um they were quite calm about it they, they gave us a bit of stick but not in like a yeah they were, know, they were quite manner. they were joking jo- about it like after it. after every song they'd be like woo Sheffield <laughs> <laughs> oh god I mean I, as a as a fan actually there's nothing I mean like watching a band live right especially in that big uh, concert environment it's it's the same case for a band to like do the performance. That's the 
that's the best experience, right? Yeah, Absolutely. definitely. I think, yeah. you, you know, that there's some, something to be said for the, the smaller gigs as well, the more intimate sort of local things. But I think when it comes down to it, people who say they prefer those, it's like, well, have you not seen how good it is on a big stage, you know, with all the great equipment you've got, like, the sound filling the room, and it's just people I remember everywhere. Like the last, sorry, the last night of the tour, when, like, they had, like, so much confetti left over from, like, the confetti cannons. So, like, on the last night, it was, like, the biggest venue. It's just the O2 Brixton, is it? Yeah. yeah. That was the last one. And uh, they were just like, right, all this confetti's got to go. So they just set off the cannons about, like, six times or something and like the entire room was filled and then like the lights were gone and I was just like yeah like it's just not the same like it is I do love a small gig but then when you are at a big gig it's like this is amazing like I'm sat there like watching all the colors all the lights and like the, the music the sound and I was just like like please don't let this end like I know this is the last night of tour but I want to go back and do it again please don't make us leave <laughs> Yeah. And for a band, it's sort of like comparing apples and oranges playing the big gigs and little gigs because they offer such a different experience. I think playing those big ones, as everyone said, it's just such a thrill and it, the professionalism of the entire event, it just it makes it that much more huge. Um, but as a drummer, personally, just playing those small venues and these will say, well, you're not that sweaty because there's a fan behind you, but getting into that sort of sweaty, claustrophobic environment and just making so much noise that you think you're going to blow the roof off of the venue is just a different yeah, kind of buzz. Yeah, there is something and... to be said for like little sweaty, little sweaty venue gigs. Like they, they are completely different, but they are just as good. Like I feel like I get more adrenaline from those. I think it is because mm. like I can literally see the people who I'm singing to because they're like, you know, three foot in front of us. And I'm like, I couldn't literally smell you right now, but you know, that's okay. <laughs> We're all having a good time. I was going to say, you run past a lot of them half the time anyways during performances, yeah, like, so I'm, I'm surprised like, you. Like fun. I'm coming down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, so guys, what's happening with... Uh, tell me a little bit about what's coming. Are you working on new songs? Uh, what's happening with music and what's your upcoming plans? Yeah, so, we've been writing this, like, the whole of lockdown. Um, we, we've got quite... We've got Roll for Punches, which we released as a demo, and you know that'll get tweaked again and then recorded properly, and it'll end up on the next EP, hopefully. Um, and then we've got probably 20 half songs. <laughs> yeah. We, we four always just, million sections. <laughs> yeah. We, <laughs> we, we always start a song, and then someone that, while we're trying to write for that song, we'll accidentally play something that sounds like a different song, so we'll start recording that one instead. Um, so, yeah, but... I, we're sort of accumulating lots of solid ideas at the minute and then as soon as we can get back in a rehearsal room together that is when we'll form them all into actual full songs i think and hopefully we'll get straight back in the studio and record a second ep most likely right so how's the response to the music that you already released how how was the response yeah it like I was saying earlier with wearing you out, it was a lot better than I think we could have even imagined. You know, we we put that out with, you know, it was our first ever single and we, we didn't expect many streams or anything. And we posted the music video and it got like over 15,000 views. And we're like, how? <laughs> we haven't even met 15,000 people. <laughs> right. Um, and it just seems to get bigger and bigger each time you know it, you know the more gigs we do the more music we release the more people we reach and it's just kind of like a snowball effect and every single time it just seems to grow and we have more and more people who you know like our stuff share our stuff and want more send us messages and like they love our music and can't wait to see us live that kind of thing and i remember it's just like kind of... how we sorry i thought you were done <laughs> Uh, he is now. <laughs> <laughs> <Be done. laughs> I was just going to say, it's always crazy when, you know, like, we'll be out somewhere and then someone who we don't know will come up to us and be like, you guys do celebrity. I really like your music. Oh, I've seen you somewhere. And like, that's, that's the thing that always kind of puts it in perspective. Like, there's someone we don't know actually listens to us. That, yeah, that's but really they'll special. always come over, like, when we're, like, sat eating food and I'll literally, I've got, like, a mouthful of burger or something. <laughs> like, you're Thieves of Liberty. And I'm like, 
But uh, I think like the weirdest thing was like when people were coming up and getting us to like sign our EP and it was like, I don't even have a signature. Like, what am I gonna, like, I was actually just writing my name on these. Like, yeah, here you go. Like absolutely overwhelming response to that EP. People tend to gravitate most towards AWOL, I think, because I think that tends to be our fan favorite. Yeah. Um, so I think that's why we like released the remastered version because, you know, because we didn't actually release that as a single firstly because it was just meant to be an EP track but people absolutely loved it so we released it as a single with uh, the intention of getting it radio play because we didn't even think it was going to be as popular as it was that's one of the things as well is um wait when you ask about response to music one of the huge things for us has been um dunk sending us music sending our music to so many people like yourself who've been you know maybe never heard of us before received some music from dunk or a little you know, maybe a little nudge just saying, these guys are really good to check them out. And there's been so many radio stations, you know, pretty much every day for, was it like four or five weeks after we'd sent Dunk some music? At we least, would just have yeah. a post. we just have at least one post a day going, these are Liberty on our station tonight. And it would just be all over the world, you know, with people from everywhere that just, we, we never would have reached by ourselves um, that would just suddenly really interested in hearing our music. And it's really nice to, to know that, it's not just people supporting us because we're local and so they're thinking, oh, it's a, it's a band close to me, so I'll go down their gigs. So it's really nice to be getting radio play across the world from people who are actually really digging our sound. Yeah, because people who don't know you like, are more likely to be honest. Like If you show like your friends and family your music and they're like, oh, yeah, this is really good. It's like, is it though or are you just being nice? But then when you do get strangers coming up and it's like, oh, my God, like I love your music. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> It means yeah. it means more because you know, like they don't have to say that. Like they don't have to listen. They have under no obligation to say that they like you. So it, it it's it's yeah. really heartwarming to know that there are people like like out there who genuinely just like our sound. I'm gonna say I had a conversation um, about a week ago with my gran for the first time about our music, and she was like, "Yeah, I've heard your music. Yeah, uh, your man's showed us it, and uh, it's, it's like heavy metal, isn't it?" And it's like, "Yeah, gran, it's heavy, it's heavy metal." <laughs> <laughs> but obviously she she grew up in in an era where you know acdc at the time when they first came out they were considered heavy metal um yeah. and now it's like they're pretty they're almost light rock compared to what comes out now so um so yeah she was like i don't You're think i would time. like it i don't think i'd like to come and see you play live it would be a bit loud for me it's like oh it would be yeah <laughs> <laughs> most definitely Although she's deaf now anyway so she'd probably be all right <sighs> Yeah, um, definitely. When when I I I was introduced, I mean, I get like hundreds of bands come in my way, like inbox every day, like so many. So when I saw you, especially when I saw you guys in the picture, and then when I listened to A Wall and Mr. Illusions, the first impression was, wow, this really good, uh, you know, good rock and roll, you know. So that's why I wanted yeah. to talk to you. Yeah, oh, I appreciate <laughs> Thank that. You very Thank much. you. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, so what's your message to the people who support you and also the people who will watch this video? Um, just thank you very much for your continued support and uh, thank you for your patience as well because obviously we can't put out as much content as we'd like to at the minute. And um, what's that thing? Um, stay in drugs, don't do school and eat your vegetables. Is that the one? <laughs> 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 no, stay don't in vegetables. Stay in don't drugs. Don't Hang on, wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Get it the right way around. Stay in, stay, in no, stay in school, do vegetables and eat your drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Something, something along those lines. Yeah, that's the that's what the cool kids say, isn't it? You're really also, wrong. what else does anyone else say <laughs> to these guys? Because I just have made an absolute, you know, pig's ear of that one. I just hope that everyone is doing all right. Eat your drugs. <laughs> what? Which one was that? Let, which bit? I'll just let Sim say it. I was just talking about drugs again. <laughs> just don't do drugs. Right. That's a Calm down. <laughs> right. In the right. morning. Uh, guys, yeah. anybody, anybody you want to shout out to? Yeah, so um, we'd really like to shout out um, our management, Forge Ahead Initiative. Um, Tina and John doing a great job for us. Um, they, they're giving us all these connections. Um, so Dunk as well, love to shout him out because he's the reason that we're on here. Um, 
you know, he he's the guy who gets out of music across to um, loads of places. He's um, plug, promote and play PR. Um, and then we have uh, our sponsors. Uh, we've got KGW Electrical. Um, they do a great job for us. Um, they help us out a lot. Um, and then Dillagaff Clothing, we've just recently hooked up with uh, as an endorsement. Um, thanks to those guys. And then, of course, uh, Fireball as well, because I think like 90% of what we've gone through recently has been you know thanks to them in some way either people have heard of us via playing the shows or directly they've given us things so um and anybody else who's just helped us in any way and supported us just thank you so much right and so, um if you want to if you like our sound there, there's loads of like other northeast bands that you can check out the likes of a uh, hive mind uh sing against siren kicking lilies um there's a new band um they were recently like they were like a, a acoustic duo until recently called comparison and they've just started like a like a full band thing um so yeah if you like if you like our sound you might like these guys as well so check them out sure so uh so lydia kiran corner same so uh i, I really uh, uh glad that we had this conversation so i enjoyed your music and have this conversation so uh all the best and uh start uh, you know uh with your music and looking forward to your you know new music stay oh, safe thank you very much for having us on yeah. like we yeah, really thanks appreciate it so thanks yeah. so lastly lastly tell everyone how they can follow you and listen to your music uh you can find so, us on every major streaming platform you know, just search these liberty i'm sure it will come up um Facebook is Thieves Liberty, Instagram is at Thieves of Liberty, and Twitter at Thieves Liberty. It's, um, it's pretty straightforward, really. Just search Thieves Liberty and you'll find us somewhere. Yeah, we, we, we've, of got us. A we've got a distribution service, so we're on like lots of the major streaming platforms. You've got Spotify, Apple Music, um, Amazon yeah. Music. We're uh, everywhere. We're still, I think. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they said that in sync. That I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, thank you. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you.